Okay. It's good. Okay, hi, my name is Brian Saunders. I'm from Marco Equipment Company, and today we're going to show you our Timco Model 435 Regenerative Air Sweeper. Our sweeper is mounted on an Isuzu NQR chassis. It's a 17,950 pound GBW, so just a regular Class C license is fine. You don't need a CDL or any endorsements or anything to operate it. Um, let me get to the other side. I'll go through the chassis a little bit more. To start with, we're going to talk about our gutter brooms assemblies here. Uh, so these are 36 inch gutter brooms and the function of these gutter brooms basically is just to get things off the curb line into the front of that which is called our uh, pickup head. It's a dual chambered pickup head. It's all hydraulically driven. Uh, it also has an automatic tilt feature on it on the other side, not on this side, so that you can get in and out of the curb lines. And then uh, we adjust these pressure wise by this little spring right here. We're just pulling pressure off of the gutter broom. So as they wear, you just let this nut out a little bit and uh, increases the pressure, increases the pressure until you get uh, probably about four inches or so, and then you just slap a new set on it. It does have some sequencing valves in the system, so if you run it up against the curb line too hard for too long, it'll stop first uh, to let the operator know, hey, you know, you, you have a problem. If, if, if the problem persists, then it will retract and go back up. Um, we try to train the operators not to do that, but you know, sometimes it happens. So that's our gutter brooms. These are called vertical digger gutter brooms because they're vertical and they dig dirt and things out of the curb line and they are steel. So this is a regenerative air sweeper. And how this sweeper works, essentially, it takes this lightweight open face cast aluminum blower wheel that's rubber coated, has a special vulcanized rubber coating adhered to it, and it pressurizes this pickup head. Now how it does that, this pickup head has got two chambers in it. The top chamber uh, runs the width of the head, and then there's a bottom chamber, which we call the work chamber. So on the bottom side, there's a blast orifice that runs, I think, from uh, about three quarters of, of an inch to five eighths of an inch. Uh, it's a little bit of a tamper to it. So this blower wheel is forcing air into the pickup head. It just creates a massive amount of pressure in there, and then it comes out of the blast. It creates a huge amount of velocity when it gets shrunk down and shoots out of the blast orifice. And it air blasts the pavement. So when you're operating, this pickup head is all the way on the ground. It's sealed on each side with these uh, carbide runners or carbide skids, and then front and back with a set of curtains. So when it's sealed on the ground, you're air blasting the pavement. You're getting all the stuff out of the nooks and crannies and cracks, even big, thick, you know, three-quarter inch rock. You get them up into the air. So we call it a regenerative air system because when everything is closed, it's a closed loop. So we don't pull any air from the atmosphere, and we don't give off any air to the atmosphere. So when this is all closed, we're pressurizing the head, we air blast the pavement, and because it's a closed system, anything this blows, it has to suck air from somewhere. And where it sucks air from is the other side, we call our suction tube. So anything this blows, it automatically sucks up that tube and deposits it into the hopper. So if you come back here, that system a little bit better. Okay, so again, the blower wheel is on, pressurizing the pickup head, air blasting the pavement. Goes up the suction tube, comes up this chute into the hopper. All the heavy solids fall to the bottom. All the fine stuff we pull up through this screen and through our dust separator, which I'll show you in a minute, and then back down into the pickup head, air blast the pavement, just do that over and over and over again. So we're regenerating the air. We're cleaning and reusing the same ball of air over and over and over again. This is called our hopper screen. We use that to keep things out of the blower wheel. Um, this right here, this is our suction. This is our chute, basically. We put these urethane liners in this spot because this is where all the heavy debris comes up. Uh, this little flap right here, it's just a drip edge. Keeps everything off the back of the sweeper. Helps you deposit it into whatever bin or uh, whatever pile you want to get to there. This back door right here gives you access to the fuel tank. This is the this is the diesel unit. It also gives you access to your safety prop when your hopper's all the way up in the air. And then uh, these are your two lift soldiers right here in the back door. Let me show you this here. So if we can come over here to the other side, I'll show you a little bit more about the dust separator and then how we power the blower wheel. So from this side over here, you 
get a good picture of the of the dust separator. You should be able to get in your mind now how everything looks when it's down. So when it's down, again we're we're using the blower wheel, pressurizing the pickup head. It's coming out of that blast orifice, air blasting the pavement. Because the blower wheel is moving, we're pulling air up this suction tube. The heavies fall on the bottom of the hopper. The fines, the, the, the rest of the airstream goes up through the hopper screen, then through this dust separator, which is our primary means of separating the dust and dust control. So it goes through this dust separator, and basically how that works is because of it's a it's a non-replaceable filtration system. It's a big metal or stainless steel box. And Timco has designed it in a way to where when it pulls the air in there, it moves the air in such a way that it, it pulls it to the outside, like a centrifuge. So it pulls all those fines to the outside while it's spinning. And there's a lip on that uh, dust separator, and there's a little hood in the hopper. So every time it comes around, because they're on the edge, it skims off some of the fines, some of the fines, some of the fines. So we can, we can really clean the air before we put it back down into the head, pressurize the head, air blast the paper. Essentially that's how it works. Now we power the blower wheel with a 56 horsepower Kubota engine. This particular one is an IT4 that meets all of the current California state emissions. Um, really easy to get to when everything's all open up. This little plug right here, this is just how we clean our dust separator. So on our regenerative air sweepers, uh, we have one moving part essentially. If you're not using gutter brooms, the only moving part in the whole sweeper is the blower wheel. And if you think of it, we just need to allow this sweeper to breathe. So it breathes through the screen, through the dust separator. So at the end of the day, when the hopper's full, you dump the hopper, make sure the screen is clean, make sure the dust separator's clean, which is why we have this plug on here. You just shoot some water in there, let it run off. Those two things are clean, you're gonna sweep like a mad dog. Okay, so auxiliary engine, 56 horsepower, dust separator is our first means of dust control. Our second means of dust control is a 150 gallon water tank. And we power the water on this sweeper using a five gallon per minute, just electric pump. Uh, you can get a cat pump if you like a cat pump with a pressure washer system to it. We can mount to the auxiliary engine um, as an optional. And then these solenoids right here, uh, run the various different water nozzles on the sweeper. This particular model has one hopper water nozzle, which we typically recommend you're going to use all the time. You're always going to run hopper water. It just helps us to uh, moisten the airstream. It also helps kind of lubricate everything. So you're typically always going to use hopper water. And then uh, this, this unit is uh, South Coast PM10 compliant. So we use specific water nozzle sizes and locations. These are our standard location nozzles for the gutter brooms. There's one other nozzle up underneath there which we call high output water. So it's got this nozzle set up on both sides. And then we have one additional nozzle inside the pressure tube that's underneath the blower wheel on the other side. Okay. Another thing that you'll notice about a Timco sweeper is that, uh, for example, this water system that I showed you. I mean, not only it's a very robust, very well-built sweeper, but they use common uh, water pumps, use common water cylinders. And when I say common, I just mean, you know, we stock them as Marco equipment as a Timco dealer. We're going to have them. The, the, the parts that you replace the most we'll have on our shelf, but, you know, if you have a, a Napa or somebody that you use all the time, these are common off-the-shelf stuff. All the valves, all the hydraulic valves, it's all common off-the-shelf stuff. They don't make a special water pump that you have to pay a bunch of money for to just use that particular one. Uh, they don't want you to have that hassle. Timco's good at building a sweeper, so that's what they focus on. Uh, all that stuff just makes it a little bit more convenient, a little bit less, a uh, little bit more cost-effective for you. All right, let's get that. Is the sun right in it? Or? No, it's okay. Okay. Uh, so it's a 150 gallon water tank. This is our fill. It comes down with an air gap on there. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> now, our chassis. It's a, this, is a, this particular model is a 2015 
Isuzu NQR, 17,950 GBW, uh, Class C license. It's 2013 emissions compliant. Basically, that just means it has the diesel particulate filtration system on it. It tells the op operator uh, when it's doing it or when it needs to be done. And then we also have a urea system um, on here as well. This is the diesel exhaust fluid system. And it tells him in the cab when it's getting low, when he needs to change it, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Yep, so this is our Timco Model 435. Again, I'm Brian Saunders from Markle Equipment Company. If you have any questions, call us. Feel free anytime. We're at 1-800-423-6220. Or you can visit our website at www.markleequip.com. Thank you.